I am sure. And you are listening to Light Up with Shua, a weekly podcast to open our hearts and minds on a journey with me. Hello, everyone. Today's topic is on fasting. So what is fasting? Is fasting relevant today? Let us explore a little. It depends who is fasting and what their belief is and what their respective faith tradition prescribes them to do, or is it medically prescribed? First, I will talk about what scientists and researchers are saying about fasting and its effects on our health and diseases. And then I will talk about what Islam prescribed about more than 1400 years ago. Now, in our current times, people like Mark Matson, chief of the laboratory of neuroscience at the National Institute on Aging, and also professor of neuroscience at the John Hopkins University, and he's also one of the foremost researchers in the arena of cellular and molecular mechanisms underlying multiple neurodegenerative disorders like Parkinson's and Alzheimer's diseases. So Mark believes that fasting twice a week could tremendously lessen the risk of developing both Parkinson's and Alzheimer's disease. He has been publishing papers along with his team to prove it. He has explained it in his TED Talk, and I will leave his and other links on my website for your uh, information. Similarly, Phil uh, Phil Sanderson in his uh, talk also explains how fasting benefited him. The title of his talk is Fasting, a Path of path to mental and physical transcendence. On the same lines, Dr. Bert Herring also advocates that how fasting is beneficial and has great value that he found in his research on the global obesity and his altered outlook on medicine. These were a few examples from today's scientists and their research on fasting. Now I'll talk about how fasting has been prescribed in the Islamic faith tradition. As I have been discussing root words in Arabic, the root word for fasting is SD Saud, Wow with W, and Meme with M. So SD W M. Saud, Wow, Meme. The Quran has termed Siyam, which is coming from this root, as compulsory. Chapter 2 of the Quran, verse 183. It means to abstain from morning till night from eating, drinking, or having physical relationship with your partner. This is also from chapter 2, verse 187. These are the days of fasting during the month of Ramadan in which the Quran started uh, being revealed. A person who is a resident, not traveling, and healthy, not sick, and his or her physique is such that fasting does not make him or her suffer, then siam or fasting is a must for that person. This is also in chapter 2, verse 184. A traveler after a journey and the sick after being healthy must complete the count of the days of fasting. But he who suffers during fasting should instead feed a needy. This is also chapter 2, verse 184. Fasting is actually a sort of military training for making the people capable of bearing the difficulties of struggles that we can encounter in our life. So it prepares us for any difficult or harsh situation. Fasting is understood in the Islamic tradition as a self-development training. Muslims fast for about 29 or 30 days depending on the lunar sighting and if properly observed and keeping the spirit of how Messenger Muhammad peace be upon him, the youngest and the last messenger in the line of messengers, observe the fast during his lifetime, then there is no reason that we would be fat or obese. Instead, we would be healthy and have tremendous self-control. It must not be done as just a ritual, but as a system of physical and spiritual development. I believe that self-control is a prerequisite both for steadfastness and fortitude in the field of life. I think many of you will agree that getting used to hard times or routines trains us for all kinds of unpredictable circumstances 
that can occur in our lives, like food scarcity, water shortage, as nowadays it's happening in South Africa. Therefore, fasting is extremely relevant today, in the most modern day life as well, because we are observed to be eating mindlessly and in stress or other times, so fasting can help us shed these detrimental eating habits and other such habits that we want to rid of. I don't mean to say that all Muslims fast according to the prescribed way or even fast, but those who do can reap the benefits of this practice. And those who are not Muslims sometimes do observe uh, these fasts and they can reap the benefit. So many Muslims all over around the world do fast in all kinds of weathers and schedules in the North American, American and European countries. The schedule of work and school does not change in non-Islamic countries, which makes it tougher to observe the fast at times, but still Muslims do observe them. So for your information, I will mention a little about uh, Lent, which is a month of uh, fasting as well. This year, Lent began on February 14th, which was a Wednesday, and is ending on uh, Thursday, March 29th. The Lent period reflects when Jesus fasted and suffered in the desert for 40 days and 40 nights before he started his ministry. Lent is approximately a month-long month period that leads up to Easter. It is a period of fasting, penitence, and prayer for Christians around the world. Those who observe it believe they are giving up things they want in order to focus on what God wants. So this is in uh, the Christianity uh, the Lent, the event of Lent that goes on. And in this year, Ramadan, which is the month of fasting that Muslims follow, begins on Tuesday, May 15th, and ends June 14th, which is a Thursday. So my message here is to learn about the fasting in your faith tradition and see how it can help you with getting healthier or maintain your health. So next time you see your Muslim friend or colleague fasting, appreciate and be supportive to them. And also for your non-Christian, uh, non-Muslim or non-Christian or whoever is fasting, to be supportive and respectful to them. I will end it, uh, you know, end our episode today with a quote by Mark Twain, which says, a little starvation can really do more for the average sick man than can the best of medicines and the best doctors. So thank you for listening. And till next segment of Path to Totality, don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review. Take care. Thank you for staying with me through this exciting episode. Please don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned for the next episode of Light Up with Schwa.